It's um, time to begin the conference. So, um, Professor Christoph Lutoge, thank you so much for accepting our invitation again. Um, originally, we planned that you would come to Japan and talk in front of students of Chiba University. But because of this coronavirus situation, um, this lecture was decided to be held online. I am expecting a lot of students uh, in Chiba University will listen to this lecture through internet. And at first, um, let me talk about this series of lecture. And three years ago, we invited Professor Ryutoke, and after that, we found uh, some members of Chiba University headquarters, so the very VIP people, highly appreciate that conference. And I heard that they think the topic of AI ethics is so important um, when I attended an interview of research project competition. So I set the uh, topic of this time more specific. Previous time, the topic was just about fairness. So I remember that is the future of fairness or kind of that. But um, this time, uh, we focus on the fairness of AI technologies. The first lecture is Professor uh, Christoph Lutoke from Technical University of Munich. And as a second lecturer, we plan uh, Professor Ugo Pagaro from Turin University in February next year. Um, anyway, unfortunately, this year, almost all people in the world truly realized the importance of information technologies. Of course, Chiba University provided uh, almost all lectures through internet. But how about the ethics of information technologies? Have we thought or discussed about that enough? Not at all, in my opinion. The discussion has just started developing. Of course, we have a sophisticated and long history of philosophy about abstract theory of ethics. However, we have not finished the project of applying this, this theory to the practice of innovative uh, technologies such as AI. So today we would like to run how should we make a good collaboration between theory and practice uh, from the lecture of Professor Ryudoge. And by the way, a book of Professor Ryudoge. And the ethics of competition was recently translated into Japanese, uh, Japanese by Professor Itaru Shimazu. And I was deeply inspired by uh, the last part of this book. Probably it is only the, the Japanese version, I think, um, uh, which is the uh, interview by Professor Shimazu. In this interview, Professor Ryutoge claims that Japanese young philosophers should be more active and international. And I perfectly agree with this idea. In my opinion, Japanese young generation is very conservative and reserved. In, <laughs> so especially um, the, the students of Chiba University is uh, quite conservative in my opinion. So, um, so there, yes. So in general, Japanese people and Japanese young people are very shy and reserved, but um, the it, it, it is true, uh, particularly in the Chiba University. So I really hope international exchanges such as this conference inspire Japanese young philosophers much more. Um, so um, before starting, I want to ask uh, our project leader, Professor Mizushima, to make an opening remark. Hello, nice to meet you. Hello. Oh, my name is uh, Jiro Mizushima. I met you for the first time uh, three years ago uh, in 2017 uh, when you visited Chiba University to give lectures uh, for scholars and students at Chiba University. Oh, th thank you. And uh, at that time, you came to Japan with uh, Dr. 
uh, Matthias Ull. I remember. Uh -huh. uh, so now I'm glad to see you again. And uh, as you know, as you know, at Chiba University, we are engaging in interdisciplinary research project about fairness and fair society. Our fields include law, economics, politics, and history. And now we include also sociology. So uh, truly interdisciplinary. <laughs> but today, uh, it is a great honor that you attend our online meeting and give a lecture about the future of AI. I have already read your presentation, 60 pages, uh, PowerPoint slides, so many, but I, uh, uh, I was, uh, it was quite fun. And uh, I can easily see that you are playing a key role in Europe uh, in the academic discussions and in the making of framework about the use of AI. So uh, now it is quite exciting that we now hear from you about the latest development about discussions about AI. Now, because uh, it is already dark outside in Chiba and Japan, other members of our program would see the recorded video of this lecture later. So, thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Mizushima. So now, let me ask the start of the lecture. And at first, Professor Ryutoke speaks about one hour. And after that, I and Associate Professor Nishigai will make some comments and ask some questions. And finally, we will have some free discussions. So the title of the lecture is um, AI Ethics from Global Principles to Specific Guidelines and Implementation. So Christoph, please go ahead. Thank you very much, Takayuki, first uh, for inviting me uh, again to uh, Chiba University to, to give this uh, lecture. And, and also thank you very much for the opening uh, remarks. Uh, Professor Miyoshima. Um, so let me share my screen. <laughs> so please go ahead. So can you see my presentation? Yes, yes. Good. Um, so I will speak today about AI ethics and about uh, the question whether it is possible for AI to be, to be fair. And first, um, uh, before uh, before discussing this, uh, I would like to start with a discussion on what is AI. Uh, I, I mean, I could also give an entire lecture on, on uh, the de possible definitions of artificial intelligence, um, but uh, that is too much. Uh, still, I think it's, it's important to uh, have some idea what we are talking about, um, since there are a number of different definitions around. So originally, uh, someone uh, as famous as Alan Turing said, a uh, machine can be called intelligent when it is able to exhibit a behavior that cannot be distinguished from the behavior of an intelligent human being. So in this sense, uh, there, uh, the idea was to make AI something like human intelligence. Um, however, um, uh, later uh, definitions, and I don't want to go through all of them, but later definitions, um, are uh, much more limited in the sense that, um, um, for example, the last, just let's go to the last definition, which just says, AI is a system's ability to interpret external data correctly, to learn from such data and to use those learnings to achieve specific goals and tasks through flexible adaptation. That is a much more limited uh, definition um, and one that I like to use. So AI uh, needs to be able to, um, to achieve these tasks, but it does not necessarily mean that it should be something like the human intelligence or something that is indist indistinguishable from human intelligence. And I think this is, this is quite uh, important to keep in mind also when discussing the ethical aspects of artificial intelligence. You can also, um, thank you also for mentioning uh, my uh, recent uh, Japanese book, which is indeed, by the way, the, um, the interview is really only appeared in Japanese yet. 
Um, and there's another book for, for the basis of this lecture, which just uh, uh, came out uh, and uh, uh, which is a very new one, an introduction to ethics and robotics and AI. And there, this is free for download, by the way, uh, as an open access volume. There you can find more about the contents uh, also of this lecture and about uh, ethics and AI in general. Um, so, um, uh, if you look at the headlines uh, about AI and you find new ones uh, every day, basically, um, there is a lot of talk about artificial intelligence, about its risks, ethical risks, and, but also about the chances and opportunities. Um, the New York Times uh, said, uh, we teach AI systems everything, including our biases. So biases is a huge uh, topic in AI ethics. Um, others uh, point to the dangerous rise of military AI. So what can military AI do? Um, what are the risks here? Uh, or combating COVID. Uh, there I will have some examples in my lecture later. Uh, also revolutioning, revolutionizing human resources. So um, AI is present in a number of areas and uh, some of these I, I will talk about in, 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 in a moment. Um, and it is seen as a global challenge as is AI. So both AI and AI ethics are global, not just local challenges. Um, I would start, like to start with the opportunities of AI and uh, I mean the ethical opportunities of AI. Um, since uh, I will talk later about the risks as well, but uh, how can AI contribute to a better society? Is, is this possible? Some of the areas that I will be talking about are these telemedicine, care robots, autonomous driving, drugs and vaccine development, as well as sustainability. So telemedicine, uh, something that uh, is, um, um, can be seen on various stages. So uh, it can be very sophisticated, for example, um, having a robots perform surgery from remote or automatically, but uh, it can also be very simple as having just video chats with, with, um, with the specialists. Uh, it, it can be debated whether this should be called AI, of course, but um, um, I mean, this is digital services. Telemedicine is, is uh, an opportunity for combating problems such as rural uh, depopulation uh, and uneven distribution of physicians. So it can be seen as a solution to reach patients in remote areas and especially uh, in, in times of, of COVID. Um, uh, this is something that has uh, increasingly been used uh, in many countries. Um, care robots, something which of course Japan is much more familiar with than, than, than Germany. Um, but it's also, it's a technology that it can be used to combat uh, the major problem of the aging society and, and the shortage on qualified healthcare personnel. Uh, so to have robots specifically designed for care tasks is I think a very important um, uh, step. Um, and while some say uh, these, these robots are, uh, are uh, less, uh, are worse than, than having a human being perform the task. Other studies say uh, that uh, older people like to have robots around for certain tasks uh, and, and, have, and regard this as more humane and preserving dignity uh, than, than having um, um, human beings do this. So they can spend more time for the, the real human uh, conversation, for example, with um, human beings. Surgical robots, I, I have mentioned that briefly uh, in, uh, in the telemedicine aspect. Uh, so these uh, can assist human uh, surgeons and Im improve the ability to see, to create precise and minimally invasive incisions, stitch wounds, and, and so on. Um, and just a recent study that has been published actually, I think these weeks, um, found that um, especially these routine tasks of, um, for example, the gynecological uh, surgery, this is something that robots can, can often uh, perform in a much better way, a much more efficient way um, than, uh, than surgeons. Diagnosing COVID, uh, a very uh, timely uh, topic. 
so um, there have been already uh, diagnostic tools based on AI, uh, which uh, can distinguish COVID uh, from, from other pneumonia in just a few seconds by ana analyzing the CT scan images here. Um, so um, you can, by, uh, by uh, analyzing images and processing images, uh, AI can detect uh, COVID cases very fast. But what is even more important in this area, which is also a, a huge ethical opportunity, I believe, is that uh, the, the development of treatments and, and drugs and vaccines, uh, not just against COVID. Uh, I think that it is probably too late because the vaccines are ready now. Uh, but for other, um, for other diseases, it, it will be very helpful in the future uh, to, um, to, to develop, um, to, develop to, to discover vaccines. Because uh, this is basically a task where huge data need to be crunched. Uh, and this is a, a major strength of AI. And IBM Watson Health can, for example, help determine the right treatment for patients depending on their underlying conditions. Uh, we see a lot of uh, collaboration here between academia and, and, um, and industry in, uh, in assisting physicians um, here and um, also, for example, uh, determining whether long intensive care patients need to receive ventilator support. So in, in many aspects, um, uh, AI can help in the current crisis, but also uh, in future diseases. An area that, that I like very much since I've been doing uh, a lot of work in, in this so is autonomous driving. And I remember a couple of years ago giving a, a lecture in Chiba University about this topic. Um, so uh, just very briefly, um, some remarks. Uh, of course, there is an ethical um, opportunity here since uh, autonomous cars could uh, help uh, save a lot of lives. Um, we have relatively high facility, uh, fatality rates. In, in Germany, for example, around 3,000 3, people are killed each year. And uh, the vast majority of these accidents are caused by human uh, errors. So this is def definitely an, an uh, ethical goal um, in itself. And there would be others uh, as, uh, for example, improving mobility of elderly people uh, or um, um, driving may be more sustainable if uh, autonomous driving can help you. So um, uh, let me come to the, the last point here that is about sustainability since this is an, an area where there's an increased focus on now in, 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 the, in, the, um, in the research groups of my institute as well. We are fo focusing a lot now on uh, sustainability of AI um, and as you see, of course, these are the 17 uh, sustainable development goals that were adopted by the United Nations um, um, four years ago. And um, um, so especially if you look at, for example, sustainable cities, number 11, um, that is something uh, that AI could be involved in. Uh, also innovation and infrastructure, so number nine, for example, even re renewable energy, um, probably also even helping with climate uh, action um, and, and others. Uh, just to give you some examples, um, AI is very helpful in agriculture. Uh, that, is, that is something that uh, in, in Europe is, is not much talked about, um, uh, unfortunately, I think. Uh, but it's uh, definitely a huge um, uh, market and a huge field in, in other uh, continents. Um, because AI can transform production, uh, for example, monitoring and managing environmental conditions and, uh, and crop yields. Um, AI systems can efficiently help reduce fertilizer use and, and water waste. And so um, it, it can be as simple as determining what, what are the soil conditions and uh, a lot of things. Using drone technology uh, is, is certainly um, uh, an, an addition here and a very useful addition and we will see much more of that uh, in, in the future. Um, we have several um, uh, collaborations with, with African uh, countries uh, in which this is already uh, being used to some extent. 
um, in terms of sustainability of AI, we have a problem. Uh, we have a, 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 we have um, a project uh, here at, at my institute about AI for Earth observation. So uh, Earth observation is, is a huge field um, uh, where um, um, which can help a lot of uh, areas uh, and. Um, there is also an ethical aspect to it. Uh, this project, I will maybe just briefly describe this, this project. It, uh, it will work on um, how uh, we can further um, in increase um, sustainability of certain areas of the world, uh, especially in, Asia, in Asian countries, by the way. It, it, uh, it is a fo there's a focus on India, for example. But there are ethical issues like, for example, of course, data protection uh, and privacy. How much is it allowed to in invade uh, certain uh, um, privacy areas, yeah, private property, uh, for example, how much is it should be allowed to be, to be seen? Um, also about, about people that you can see walking on the street doing certain things. Uh, other um, topics here are data portability from one system, from one country to another, and e eventually also the question of fairness and equality. Um, so not just in the collection of data, but also in how and to whom do you disseminate the data, who can make use of the data. Um, uh, it, it, the the um, uh, concrete topics here, for example, is, is, is there is a, a case study of, of, a, of a slum area in an Indian city, and uh, it, it, the idea is to help um, uh, to help assess the the dynamics of, of water supply systems, and uh, this project plans to create a planning tool for that, um, and um, it, it would help to distribute water more efficiently and and also more uh, equally. So. Uh, in a, and, and that uh, could help public plannings and public planning capacities in a relatively inexpensive way to imp eventually improve their water supplies. But you have to make uh, sure that you don't build an inherent bias into your system so that specific areas are uh, uh, discriminated against. So there is, this is a fundamental danger that might happen. So uh, we have talked now about opportunities of, of ethical opportunities of AI. Uh, it could be summarized as AI could help enable um, human self-realization. It could help enhance human agency and increase societal capabilities, as we have seen, for example, in the in the um, Earth observation case. But of course, there are also ethical challenges, and these might be very severe ones. Often, these are. Uh, first discussed and, and uh, opportunities, not so much. I think that that doesn't give a fair picture. So it's important to, to discuss both. So first we have technical challenges. Uh, AI systems de depend very much on the accuracy of the technology. And there are dangers of technical errors. For example, of, in, in the, if you take the example of um, um, AI-based um, surgery, which I've given before, uh, of course, these, these systems need to be very precise in order to, be, to work and, and also be accepted. The same holds for uh, systems in autonomous driving, obviously. So even, so if we, you know, we have uh, in, um, in, uh, with the Tesla cars, which are not yet autonomous cars, but highly automated at least. Uh, they, um, the, the few accidents that we have seen uh, caused a lot of media um, outcry. And there was, for years, there was a lot of talk about, about these accidents. So it, it, it is important to, um, to make sure that the technology works as, as good as possible. Um, and there's also danger of, of losing um, the uh, autonomy uh, of your de decisions. This is something that uh, it's maybe more uh, a problem in the longer run, but still, uh, as you see, uh, you might uh, give uh, some tasks and control over certain tasks out of the hand. Um, uh, second, a uh, second area is, is of course that there's an um, increased vulnerability against attacks. 
from the outside. This is something that, that especially engineers and computer scientists uh, focus a lot on. They say, uh, well, security of the system is the most important one. Um, I think it is certainly, uh, uh, however, uh, whether we really see, for example, the, if you have, I think it was one, in one of these movies, uh, Fast and Furious, where uh, all autonomous cars were hacked at the same time and caused a massive uh, um, um, crashes on the on the streets. I think the, these cases is, are certainly a bit exaggerated, um, but it's it's very nice to depict it in a movie. Um, um, still, uh, I think severe attacks are can have severe consequences. Uh, although I I think uh, we will see, especially in this area, we will see very good uh, measures of protection against it. Um, Privacy uh, is, is an important topic, um, uh, which is especially uh, for uh, the European uh, principles that I will talk about uh, in a moment, uh, is, a, is a key topic. Uh, the GDPR, so the General Data Protection um, Regulation in the, that was adopted in Europe, has also had a lot of um, uh, yeah, um, I I impact in many other areas of the world. And, uh, just recently, California adopted a similar regulation, not exactly the same, but, but a similar one. Um, and uh, it's, uh, we certainly should not um, uh, underestimate that there are different perceptions of the problem of privacy. So it's, it's not seen in the same way, even, even within, um, if you compare European countries. But it, it, is certainly, it is certainly an important ethical aspect. And finally, the digital literacy, uh, which is uh, often lacking. Um, this is um, uh, this is certainly um, not to be underestimated as well. Um, what we uh, see, um, if you talk to companies, and we are at, at here at the IAI, uh, we are in touch with a lot of companies working in, in AI, uh, large ones, uh, but also smaller startups what they like to um, work on and which they focus on uh, from, from an ethics angle is in, in particular the question of liability and responsibility. So who is to be held responsible when, for example, an autonomous vehicle um, crashes? And certainly Google says, well, we, this is taken from a, from a video, um, uh, the famous video on YouTube where an art in, in a car crashes into um, uh, another one. Um, and it's, it's important in, in these cases to, to first to find out who was responsible and, and what the liability of, of the companies will be. Um, I think um, it is, there are, there are different uh, discussions here. So some, some would like to hold individual programmers responsible. Um, I don't think this is a, a, a way to go ultimately, but it, what we will see is rather uh, increased uh, cases of product liability. Um, companies uh, are used to this. They, they know about product liability in a lot of areas, in a lot of uh, products they develop. Um, and so, which means they will be held responsible and liable um, even if if uh, not everything was proved in the concrete case. And I think this, this is an important step, especially in autonomous cars, um, where uh, currently still the regulation is that the uh, owner or, or, the, or the, the driver of the car um, is uh, held, is responsible for everything that happens. But we will certainly see with more and more autonomous functions being implemented that uh, the car companies will be held um, liable. Um, certainly, this means that uh, they will also have to uh, make sure in the in the systems they implement that um, this is that they take uh, their as it's called due diligence uh, in in making sure that um, uh, accidents are avoided to the utmost uh, extent possible. This image, by the way, is taken from this famous Uber accident uh, two years ago, and. Uh, so uh, Uber um, finally uh, uh, was, I mean, it was found that certain things were not clear in what they said, but um, it was also um, some uh, problems from the side of the, from the driver's side. 
um, I, I don't want to go into all the details of these these crashes, um, but it, it's I I encourage you to have a look at these. Um, you, you find the sources below. It's very interesting to see uh, the reports about the Uber crash in Arizona and the Tesla crash, and it, it these uh, will very will have very important uh, ramifications for future cases of responsibility and liability. Yeah, so it it won't be possible in the future to say the customer is just responsible. So this is something that that will not be uh, will not be uh, viable anymore. Um, in the military use of AI, um, of course, there's a much talk about these killer robots. Although I should say, the, in, in, in some, somehow, uh, there's a kind of schizophrenia, in, at least in Germany and, and some other European countries, about these topics. Because uh, on the one hand, people fear uh, so much about, uh, yeah, about killer robots and the Terminator, ultimately. But on the other hand, uh, there's not much discussion about the concrete systems that are already being used and, and, and uh, um, yeah, yeah, also by the German armed forces. And um, this is, there's not much discussion about these concrete questions. So uh, but I, again, we don't have time to go into all the details, but there is a lot of um, important uh, ethical aspects. Uh, what, what's the difference between, uh, for example, uh, well, in terms of, of recognizing um, a child uh, with a weapon. Um, well, first, can you uh, can you um, confidently uh, recognize it, detect it? Uh, should you uh, kill? Uh, yeah, should you launch a drone against the child with a weapon, even if it were legally allowed? Is it ethical to do so? Under what circumstances might it be ethical? Uh, what's the difference between a combatant and a non-combatant? And that is that is an important aspect which. Uh, human soldiers have to also deal with, but what can an AI uh, do and how should it be programmed here? Very uh, difficult um, questions. Um, uh, let me come to, uh, to the last example here, that is bias. Since this is, I, I think, one of the most pressing uh, ethical aspects of um, of AI. Uh, two, uh, two examples. Um, one is about prison sentences. I don't know whether this is already uh, 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 an issue in Japan. Um, this is taken from, from the US where um, AI, um, AI systems are used to determine the, the length, for example, of, of prison sentences and also the, the question of uh, the, the probability whether someone would, or would again be um, uh, caught uh, stealing or whatever. And it might get things wrong or discriminate uh, systematically against a certain part of the population. That is what some studies have found. So, for example, against uh, black people um, or other people of color. Uh, uh, last here, uh, a fa another famous example in this area is the Amazon uh, tool that uh, was used a, a couple of years ago by Amazon, which uh, was um, designed to show people job offers. Um, but it, it, it was uh, it was found that it showed uh, women systematically uh, uh, worse uh, or, or less good um, um, job ads. Um, well, I mean, with this example, I should always, I'm, I like to say that it was only used as in a test run. So it was not, it, it could not be used by everyone. So Amazon eventually scrapped the tool um, and did not use it. Um, and this all, again, might be uh, a step too far in the future. So once the systems have improved and once you have um, improved on the side of bias, then it should be possible to use the application because I mean, they can be much more efficient and can also remove maybe subjectivity of, of the, the, the part of the, of the uh, human beings that would otherwise be in charge. So um, I think it is important to take the challenges and opportunities together uh, and, and see, of, certainly there are these challenges of possibly devaluing human skills, reducing human responsibility and human control, but there are also the opportunities. The challenge now is to what to, how to get one and, and reduce the other. Um, and to this uh, effect, uh, in the past few years, a number of principles for ethics uh, of AI have been developed. 
Uh -huh. And um, while there are certainly a number of, uh, of these, I, I will just give you some, um, some examples. Uh, this is a very recent, um, uh, this is from the very recent paper of the European Commission on, on AI. Um, which uh, is focusing now, uh, this is a very recent one, uh, on an ecosystem of excellence. Uh, it focuses uh, on the efforts of the research and innovation community, uh, especially, and, and not just on academic research, but also on research from the part of the companies. Um, uh, and, and here it focuses also on uh, SMEs, so small and medium enterprises, um, and uh, um, including ethical aspects in the development of AI in, in the first place. Um, we have, um, in, in Germany, we have recently uh, seen the work of, the da of a data ethics commission, uh, which, was, um, uh, which worked for some years to determine the criticality of AI systems. AI and, and uh, big data systems, we, we do not distinguish sharply between these two, uh, for, because it's, it's very intertwined, the problems are intertwined. Um, and I will just give you uh, these, this um, pyramid uh, image here, which um, um, was developed by this commission in order to determine whether uh, an AI uh, system or an AI application has uh, zero harm for, or zero potential for harm. Uh, that would be level one and higher applications would have significant or some potential or serious potential for harm or untenable potential for harm that would be level uh, four um, and in, in the view of this commission it is it is it is not uh, official uh, policy it's a view of this data ethics commission um, these uh, level five applications should be banned so so this was a report the report came out uh, uh, last year um however um so far we have not yet seen uh, this being adopted into policy and i'm also a bit critical actually of this uh, report because i think it it overvalues the the risks of ai and does not talk enough about the opportunities um recently there is i mean currently there is a um, discussion about uh, European uh, governance of AI. It, there is not yet a conclusion, uh, but some um, uh, some um, promoted the idea of of introducing this level, uh, this five level um, um, pyramid into the European regulation on AI. But it was actually now uh, more or less. It looks like it will be rejected, and if there will be uh, a, a, a quite different um, uh, criticality level, probably two levels only. But this is not, this is underway, so I don't, uh, I can't say uh, very uh, uh, concrete things about it yet. Um, what is very much known, and maybe it is, this is uh, something I was involved with uh, in Europe. We um, uh, have been uh, developing um, principles for ethics of AI in the past years. These two were uh, first uh, published in 2018 by the high level expert group on AI and also the AI for people. Uh, one is working with the European Commission, the other with the European uh, Parliament. Um, and uh, for us, uh, this is a key uh, scheme here that, that that was introduced to have these seven key requirements for trustworthy AI, starting uh, with human agency and oversight, with technical robustness and safety, to privacy, data governance, transparency, um, diversity and fairness. This is where the uh, biases would be discussed. Uh, society and environmental well-being, that would be sustainability, for example, and finally also accountability. Um, and a number of technical and, and also non-technical methods uh, were uh, proposed um, for uh, introducing uh, these, these seven principles. Um, I, I don't want to go too much into detail here, but just in terms of technical uh, methods, um, it, it, AI, for example, should document the decisions made and, and the processes. And uh, also the, the explanation of AI is a, is a key, um, is a key uh, principle here. 
um, and this is a technical field in computer science also, X, X AI research, so explainable AI research, how, to, how do you make uh, the, the result of a, of a uh, black box process, um, as it's often the case with AI, how to make it uh, explainable? principle at least. But there are also non-technical methods, for example, in terms of standardization or introducing codes of conduct, uh, re uh, raising awareness for these systems among the public and, uh, and others. What I find important is to uh, work on diversity in your design teams. Uh, so design teams should not be just of one mindset and of one uh, yeah, type of personality, but they should be much more diverse. And I think this is quite important and should not be underestimated. Uh, just to give you one example from a German company, BMW, which you might know, um, is uh, they just recently adopted a code of ethics for AI in, in, in their, not just in, in autonomous driving, but uh, also in AI, for example, in the production. Um, um, in, in, uh, yeah. um, so uh, this is very similar to, to the seven, uh, to the seven principles, but within these, they have um, they have more specific um, questions, and, and that is the task for that we are facing now. Since we need to go from these high-level abstract principles to more concrete ones, um, these were the, the high-level abstract principles. So beneficence, do good, promote well-being. Uh, sustain the planet. Non maleficence don't do don't do bad. Um, uh, for example, ensure your privacy and and, and so on. Uh, autonomy, justice, uh, and explicability. Finally, um, so these but these were very and still are very important principles, but they are very abstract ones. And now uh, the question is, how do you get uh, to the more concrete level? And this is um, something that. Um, we are just this year, actually, just um, actually next week, um, the AI for People will be, present, will be presenting uh, sector-specific guidelines developed in, um, in cooperation uh, with companies. Um, and I'm, uh, I'm uh, the chair of the automotive committee, uh, which next week at the AI for People Summit, virtual summit, which, to which uh, uh, everyone is invited, um, uh, will present these. Uh, so the goal is to advise more concretely on specific ethical issues that arise from autonomous vehicles uh, and we have the, these high level topic areas, but we have more concrete policy recommendations for policy makers uh, in setting acceptable standards and also industry recommendations that formulate guidelines uh, for the companies. And as we have, for example, just to give you uh, some ideas about it, uh, we um, we uh, think that it's important to have a responsible balancing of risks um, or of estimated harm that should be permitted um, at any time for AVs. Uh, just to give you one example, how uh, close to another vehicle should a vehicle, an AV, an autonomous vehicle drive? Um, so, so not just the question of should, in a case of an unavoidable accident, uh, should it harm the elderly people or uh, the, the children to the other side? I mean, these cases are very famous, much discussed, but there are much more uh, important ones. Uh, so everyday um, uh, risk uh, assessments. So just when driving normally on the street, how, how far should you go um, from, how, how much distance should you keep from another car to the left, to the right, uh, how much distance should you keep from, from, uh, um, from uh, a pedestrian or, um, uh, or um, a cyclist? So the, the, there are a lot of uh, very interesting detailed questions here. Also, we are proposing a more incremental uh, incremental step by step approach and not just uh, from going from zero to <laughs> full mode and um, and we also are calling for developing a clear regulatory framework for AVs, something which is lacking um, currently still at the moment um, yeah, if you want to look in the details this is this is again what I just said uh, um, responsible balancing of risks. Um, and also, for, sure, for example, should you have an override option and to what extent should you have it? 
the ethics of autonomous driving has some history uh, way back. So this is uh, the German Ethical National Ethics Commission, which uh, was uh, appointed some years ago and uh, in 2017 already presented the worldwide first ethics code there. I was happy to be uh, to have been in involved uh, with them. And um, already there we gave some recommendations on uh, uh, what to do in, uh, in cases here again, I take this example from uh, unavoidable crashes and we said it, it should not discriminate against, systematically against um, certain parts of the people, for example, elderly people or uh, people of color. So this is uh, a, a distinction based on personal features we say is not uh, allowed. And there are other examples in, in there that you can find. So let me just um, give you um, some ideas uh, about the institute that since then has been uh, uh, opened up here in Munich at the Technical University under my uh, uh, direction. And um, just to um, give you some ideas, since in this institute we are, we are working on doing exactly that, um, uh, making AI ethics more concrete. And uh, our, our overarching vision is the human-centered engineering. Um, so uh, the, our new president uh, who took office last year uh, um, uh, adopted this vision of introducing more elements of social sciences and humanities into the engineering curriculum. And uh, here uh, the IAAI is one, um, one of, is working in this direction. We have a number of, of different uh, projects in, in, in very different areas. Uh, you uh, have seen the, uh, the example of, um, of Earth observation that I gave. Um, as you see here on all our projects, we are working in an interdisciplinary way. I think this is the only way to make AI uh, more ethical and more fair. We, we need to uh, work together um, with the uh, people from technology, with the engineers and the computer science and the people from medicine also, uh, and, and uh, on the other hand, people from, with, with, with the necessary skills in the humanities, in ethics, in law and, and uh, other social sciences also. Um, so we, are, we have projects, uh, for example, uh, about ethical advisor systems for doctors uh, and how should, uh, according to which criteria should these be uh, programmed. Uh, we are looking at uh, how uh, machine learning uh, can generate uh, trust. What what rules would it? What ethical guidelines would machine learning need? Um, what meaningful regulations it would need to generate trust? Um, and others. So one one example of, of this is the autonomous driving ethics project. Andre in short. Uh, which I'm a, a principal investigator of. So we are working together with the Institute of Automotive Technology at TUM. Uh, we do, um, um, so they, in, in the, from the technology side, for example, they are, they are working on motion planning frameworks. So motion planning means what, uh, what uh, tracks should, uh, or what, what uh, path should uh, a car, an autonomous car take, and what risks can be allowed in this path. And there are certain ethics, ethics settings. Um, so what, what, as I mentioned before, um, what distances do you need to keep in setting these paths? Um, uh, what is too risky? Uh, what, what can be allowed? And uh, there we are also investigating what could be uh, seen as a fair uh, ethics setting since you are faced with a lot of other um, uh, drivers, cyclists, pedestrians, and uh, whatnot. So um, uh, you need to find some way to uh, fairly distribute the risks. And that is, that is not an easy task. This is something that we are doing in, uh, in empirical emulation, simulating real and critical scenarios and, um, and others. So we are, we are coming here, and I think this is, this is very important for AI ethics, to come from very abstract problems like the trolley problem. So the trolley problem, which, what should the, the car, uh, should it kill the elderly people to the left or the, the children to the right, um, uh, to ethics of risks uh, and, and, uh, uh, um, uh, and, and uh, a fair uh, risk assessment 
uh, is, I think, key to uh, the ethics of AI. Um, so we, we do not we do not make a, um, a decision about life. So this person should be killed, as some uh, models and the theoretical thought experiments uh, would like it to be. But rather, where, where do we put slightly more risk? And and we need to uh, often, for example, we need to give. Uh, more risk to those who are more pr protected. Um, so where, where, whereas those which are more vulnerable, we need to uh, we need to give less risk um, to them. Uh, another project which I would just uh, uh, give you an example. This is a project on consumer perception and and acceptance, uh, and it's it's about recommender systems. And recommender systems are a very uh, important. Um, uh, example for AI uh, software, um, which are of course used in, in wide areas. Uh, if you look at Amazon, of course, you get recommendations for what you might also buy based on on your previous uh, history, but also on on uh, certain um, uh, information that these systems have gathered from wherever, um, uh, hopefully um, in a, in a legally uh, okay way. Um, so, but in this project, the idea was to investigate which factors influence consumer perception of recommender systems and uh, whether this perception differs when nudging is included. I hope, I take it that nudges is understood what, what is meant by that and how uh, perceived manipulations uh, and privacy concerns impair the acceptance of recommender systems. So, so if people think they are being many manipulated by the system would they rather uh, ex to to a lesser extent accept the recommender system or not and this is uh, something that these uh, this this project assesses uh, we actually uh, well i mean it's still on the on the way mm, i don't need to go into all the details but here are some of the results that we find that um, the perceived effectiveness, ease of choice, uh, influence the acceptance of re recommender systems. Uh, and that we find that um, if, if consumers perceive manipulation, they, there is less acceptance, but however, they are indifferent towards presence of nudges in choice environments. So if they are nudged into, uh, let's say, more healthy food, this is something that is rather uh, accepted uh, as this study finds. But of course, we will need to work on more um, more uh, research here in, in this field. Okay, um, as, a, as, in, as a final step, I would, uh, uh, as I said in the beginning, um, we, um, AI is a global challenge, but so is AI ethics. And uh, that is why we have, as, as when the Corona crisis started, we, uh, founded the Global AI Ethics Consortium, um, uh, which is, is since since we find it is not important, it is not enough to to work on AI ethics as as a as a national institute or regional institute, but to coordinate and promote uh, independent academic research um, towards uh, designing and implementing ethical frameworks and guidelines for uh, AI and. Um, uh, to, at the moment, as for this year, uh, this consortium focuses a lot on uh, responsible AI in the fight against pandemics and, uh, and especially, of course, COVID. Um, uh, but um, we will focus on other uh, AI uh, areas in the future and in the years to come. Uh, so we are uh, coordinating funding uh, and joint research initiatives uh, to allow research related to this area, to AI ethics, especially in health crises at the moment. We disseminate uh, research and um, we uh, also hold meetings um, uh, for this, uh, for this uh, topic. So we have uh, partners around the globe, also in Japan, uh, but uh, in, in all uh, um, continents actually uh, as well and and finally um, we are planning to hold the responsible AI forum in next June uh, which hopefully will also be an in-person event uh, um, uh, which will be a, a major new um, um, 
conference uh, for uh, discussing the ethics of AI. So let me come to a conclusion here. Um, what is needed for an ethical AI? And to, to summarize, this is uh, not uh, easy, of course, but um, as I've made, tried to make clear, uh, trust in AI is very important. If people uh, do not trust AI systems, they will just not use them. As I like to say, AI will not fly without ethics. Um, you need internal trust. So the, the, within the company, you need the trust of, of the, of the uh, workers, um, uh, the employees. But you, of course, you also need external trust on the part of the users and your other stakeholders, for example, your suppliers. Certainly, we need more data to assess the impact of certain algorithms and AI systems. So we need more, more research. Otherwise, um, certain AI governance and, and also ethical guidelines that are proposed might be premature. Um, we, so we will need guidelines and frameworks for ethical AI. And some of these we have seen in the, in the recent past. But we will need more concrete tools for companies to follow these ethical frameworks and to establish this, this trust. Uh, we should, in this um, framework, also rather think in terms of human-machine collaboration uh, for the years to come, at least. Uh, instead of this idea, AI should replace humans. If so, if you are, if you are thinking AI is, is something to completely replace humans, yeah, in, in some areas we will see that. Uh, but uh, in, in others, in most others, actually, it will rather be a case of um, supporting the work of humans and many decisions that will still be made eventually, um, or at least formally by human beings. And uh, uh, the ultimate goal uh, is to meet societal ac acceptance. So if AI tools and systems are not, uh, are not meeting uh, the acceptance of society, um, uh, they, they, will not, they will not work, they will not be adopted. And this might mean that you will have slightly different uh, um, uh, goals, uh, uh, guidelines for, for, um, for AI since uh, societal acceptance might vary also to, to some extent around the globe. But this is something we are, uh, we are used to in, in other areas as well. So thank you very much. Thank you. And thank you very much for your lecture, uh, Professor Ryutoke. So um, next, I would like to make uh, my own comments. So please watch my um, PowerPoint slide. Do you see that? Yes, I see it. All right. Um, so let's start. Thank you very much for your interesting lecture, Professor Yutoge. So my comment is titled Human Agency and Fairness in the Era of Human AI Collaboration. And it consists of two parts. Um, the first part is about human agency or human autonomy or maybe human responsibility. Um, suddenly, AI technology enhances human agency. For instance, by using autonomous car, our freedom may be improved drastically. Here, by freedom, I mean positive liberty of Isaiah Baring. However, freedom or agency or autonomy is quite complicated idea, especially around AI, because we can manipulate or nudge others by using AI. As a principle on autonomy, um, Professor Yudoge referred to the idea of striking a balance between the decision-making power we retain for ourselves and that which we delegate to AI. And I think this is a very good idea. And I think um, 
humans, not AI, must take responsibility to strike this balance. Uh, in my opinion, we should not derogate the power to draw the extension of human autonomy to AI. And now the discussion of uh, the recommender system is very um, interesting and important, I think. Here, AI, at least partly, um, constitutes our context of choice. By using AI, we can reduce the cost of decision making. And this means AI is enhancing our ability of autonomy on the one hand, or maybe in a sense, but it reduces that ability at the same time. However, this is not a new phenomenon in my opinion. According to the arguments of communitarianism uh, in the political theory, I think, our cultures, conventions, or traditions, or, um, and so on, so, so our circumstances in general, shape our context of choice. And only inside this context, we can exercise our ability of autonomy. In my opinion, dispute between liberalism and communitarianism was already overcome. So some people say no, but I think so. So and having the context of uh, choice be shaped by culture or convention or circumstances is not necessarily the obstacle for our autonomy to exercise. And uh, so, ha so having the context of choice be shaped by cultural convention is not necessarily the obstacle for our autonomy to exercise. And my question is that, what is AI different from our culture or conventions or circumstances in general? Many liberals do not fear the power of culture to control us absolutely anymore. But some liberals still fear the power of AI to dominate us. So what is special about AI among a lot of factors of uh, circumstances surrounding us? The second part of my comment is about fairness. Here, I have three questions. First, the ethical principle that uh, any distinctions based on personal features is strictly uh, prohibited. The personal features such as age, genders, or um, so on, on is prohibited. Um, general programming to reduce the number of personal injuries may be justifiable. It's very um, interesting. And I agree with this idea about autonomous car, but is it applicable to AI ethics in general? For example, how about drug development? In the discussion of distributive justice of medical resources, some people, including me, think uh, that age is quite relevant and we should take it, take it into account. Actually, in Japan, vaccine of COVID-19 may be provided to elderly people first and probably the medical staff next, probably. The second question is about the principle that AI should reflect the diversity of users and of society. How can it be possible? Um, because um, reflection of diversity, I think, requires uh, respect and taking care of a lot of detailed differences among people or societies. If so, 
case by case decision making may be necessary. And isn't it something that AI is not good at handling? So actually, I'm not sure. I'm not very good at um, using such kind, uh, kind of information technology. So um, probably I am wrong, but I think, or, and I think many people think AI is not uh, very good at handling such kind of diversity. So please tell me if you know any good example of AI reflecting people's diversity. Probably you have shown some example uh, in your presentation, but I um, think uh, more about that. Uh, so, <clears throat> The third is my very simple question. Um, you mentioned Amazon's AI recruiting tool was biased against women or an AI send, uh, for example, the black people to jail in very selective way. So um, what happened there um, and why it happened and how can we cope with this problem? So this is all my, all of my uh, comments and questions. Thank you very much. And and this is um all of my uh, comments and questions. And next, um, so shall we move on uh, to uh, Professor Nishigai? So um, I want to ask Professor Nishigai to speak next. And Dr. Nishigai has a master degree of information technology and uh, the license of professional lawyer in Japan. And now he teaches criminal law in the law school of Chiba University. So I am expecting that he will make much better presentation than mine. So Professor Nishigai, please go ahead. Nice to meet you again. Nice to meet you. Okay. Okay. Maybe, um, actually, so I'm a criminal law scholar and specialized in cybersecurity. And uh, actually, so um, not about uh, machine learning system, but about just uh, how can, can I say so? Maybe uh, in Germany, so I am engaged in some research about uh, legal informatics. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so creating some codes or programs about criminal law or civil law or some, something thing, uh, to, uh, for using in the court procedure or something. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. so it, uh, your presentation is very interesting to me because uh, maybe uh, at first I'd like to, uh, I'd like to confirm uh, one point about the, so, Andre project you are engaged in. So, so it, sorry, so the Andre, so autonomous driving ethics. So, and the, the maybe, actually, so some Japanese uh, cri uh, people uh, engaged in criminal law and criminal procedure uh, tend to think that uh, uh, AI and autonomous cars must be uh, very safe and uh, must, uh, but, uh, uh, at least uh, comply with the transportation laws. But it is, uh, so, uh, the, it includes some misunderstanding uh, between uh, what, what the safety is and the, what the compliance of the, with the law is. So maybe uh, your approach uh, about uh, safety, uh, enhancing safety is very, uh, I think, good approach, better approach. Because some Jap uh, Japanese IT or IoT researchers uh, <laughs> researches about how to uh, how to make some programs in autom autonomous cars uh, should comply with just uh, precedent of the Supreme Court cases and uh, the just transportation laws. Maybe this is maybe this um, and this will make many cars <laughs> very uh, dangerous. So. I'd like to confirm that uh, uh, maybe uh, are there some uh, controversial issues about safety and uh, complying with law, transportation, or maybe uh, you, uh, uh, your country has also transportation laws, maybe. The, 
one thing is uh, this kind of this thing. Maybe I just I'd like to confirm. Maybe uh, your project um, and the project is better approach, I think. So I'd like to just to confirm. And the, the second thing is maybe uh, relating to the question that, uh, the professor Kaus made. So the, maybe in the presentation uh, of 29, so about the principles for an SCAL AI. So you mentioned about uh, something about the explainable AI. So actually, so in, in machine learning system, uh, my understanding is to create some, uh, ah, sorry, machine learning system is a black box system, you mentioned also. So, and uh, so it's very difficult to understand how to trace uh, the uh, decision, uh, decision making. Uh, in AI. So maybe we have to, maybe developers or engineers have to uh, create some other programs uh, to translate uh, from the process data, pro data processing uh, to natural language. No, me, if no, uh, uh, maybe I'm, I'm misunderstanding the AI machine learning system, but maybe it, it um, at least in, uh, we are, uh, sorry, at least uh, we have to translate to uh, translate some process to natural language to explain uh, us, ourselves. Or, mm. so, so, and uh, regarding the bias in the algorithms, maybe yeah, I'm very uh, interested in the how to uh, find uh, the bias of the AI. So, and uh, maybe, uh, maybe the one, um, very simple solution to create some uh, unbiased AI is that uh, just we should uh, not use uh, the skin color or something in developing AI system. Skin, uh, skin color maybe just so in the um, Amazon case, so we should not uh, we should not input the skin color uh, of people to the system or something. But it's very interesting for me because uh, in criminal, uh, other criminal law researchers, so maybe uh, in the criminal courts, uh, humans uh, see skin colors, uh, defendants of skin colors, uh, skin colors of defendants. So, but maybe, uh, maybe we, um, we must accept some kind, uh, to some degree, <laughs> the bias of humans or, or ourselves, but uh, we are very strict to AI. <laughs> So uh, what do you think about this kind of bias to see, uh, bias things and uh, how to, uh, yeah, so if uh, uh, AI, AI get, uh, gets unbiased, uh, we, um, can we trust in these kinds of unbiased AI? Because uh, in criminal law, uh, criminal court system, we, we have, uh, uh, of course, we have human, human judge, judges, human prosecutors. But we, we accept this kind of thing. Accept means maybe we trust in the current criminal court system. So, so how, to make, uh, how to make trust in uh, unbiased AI is also a difficult thing for us to, uh, So I'd like to discuss about this kind of thing. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. So I yeah, so um, Professor, Professor Ryutoke, do you have any reply uh, to yes. our uh, questions or comments? Yes, so I let me reply in, in, in turn. So s starting with yours, uh, um, um, I mean, you mentioned a, a number of aspects. Um, I, will, I will start with the, with the age um, aspect. Um, let me just uh, get this here uh, again. Um, so, um, um, I believe that, of course, we need to take into account uh, different factors in, in different AI systems. Um, and, and this, uh, this way to, uh, to go in, in saying we, we must never discriminate uh, or, or not, at least not or never base your decision on a, a, a distinction between people. Of course, this is not possible in, in, in all AI systems and it's not, not always what we want. So if, if, of course, if we want a treatment for an elderly patient, um, 
and, and that patient has certain uh, characteristics, then we need to base uh, our, our treatment on these characteristics. I think this, this applies also to what Professor Nishigai uh, said uh, about the biases. So, so sometimes, of course, um, we, we need to uh, take, uh, in many ways, take, take into account uh, the specifics of the case. Um, what was, um, in, in the case of autonomous driving, what was important is um, that we should not systematically uh, build, uh, in, in, the, in the case of these unavoidable crashes, we should not systematically build uh, a, a rule into our system that says you, you should always hit the elderly person. Um, because that, that is something that, that would be against constitution. Um, uh, so because in that, in that if, if we build that rule, then you uh, automatically discriminate against a certain part of the population. Um, and um, whereas uh, in, in most cases, it's much more complex. I, I think complexity is a, an important factor here. If, if, um, if, if you talk, as I said, about the everyday situation in autonomous cars, for example, this is much more complex than just saying, well, you need to hit either that person or that person, but it, it's, it's a complex decision. There you need to assess many factors. I think this, this is an important point. And, and of course, then you need to, um, you know, take into account the specifics. Uh, you also asked about the diversity aspect um, and to have some examples for diversity uh, because I think AI can take uh, diversity aspects into account better than other technologies, uh, I would say. Um, uh, if you, for example, um, um, I, I like to use this example of the chatbot Raji. Uh, Raji is a chatbot that is specifically um, designed to give information on, on uh, well, um, questions of reproductive health in the wide sense to women, young women in Pakistan. Um, and it's, it's to, uh, to, so to give information on something that is considered a taboo subject in, in, in their societies. And I think this is, this is a very good example where uh, a, a, a stupid uh, system like a chatbot, maybe stupid, not always stupid, uh, can be um, made quite sophisticated and can be tailored to a specific um, um, uh, society or parts of the society. Um, and, and also, I mean, AI can adapt very quickly to very different circumstances and, and can also be, as, as I believe, um, much more than, than previous technologies can be creative. If you look at, for example, the way it can create images. Um, as you see, uh, I like to point people to this uh, page. Uh, this person does not exist, a very famous page. And, and you see an AI creating uh, images of people who, who are indistinguishable from, from real person. Um, or GPT-3. I mean, GPT-3 uh, is, is a very major step, I believe, and, and it, it can create, um, yeah, also um, very, very diverse um, results. Um, you asked also about the women. The, how, what do we do? Yeah, this is well, what do we do? Uh, because uh, in the Amazon case, basically the tool was scrapped. Uh, it was not implemented. And, and the, 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 this, is, this is a challenge uh, because and, and you find the same in, for example, uh, these systems, uh, which it was found, they, they, so it was, it was about face, facial recognition and facial recognition is difficult, is more difficult with darker skin colors, apparently. Mm -hmm. And this is something that is uh, often, I mean, you cannot totally avoid this, this bias. Uh, I mean, it should not lead to a bias in the decision, uh, but it, it, it can, it is a problem. It is a real problem. And um, there, actually, I, I don't have a good solution yet. I mean, I think this refers also to the question that Professor Nishigai uh, um, uh, post uh, about uh, what 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 to do with with uh, skin colors uh, because we ask uh, we ask AI to be stricter than than human beings. I think you are you are right. Um, or, or, or we ask more. We have stricter conditions for for AI. Uh, I think this is okay in principle, but we sh we cannot. I mean, if we want to make it one hundred percent fair, one hundred percent safe, and one hundred percent uh, uh, equal, uh, then 
probably we co we cannot use it, uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. and so we 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 will need to uh, see um, how to mitigate those those risks and and mm -hmm. reduce the risks. But you probably cannot totally avoid avoid it. I like to use the example from human resources and recruiting, especially. So there are these re recruiting uh, tools, um, and we will see more, many more of them in the future. Uh, uh, in the, that are based on AI and, and uh, then people try, find certain biases in the system. But on the other hand, the, those human uh, decision makers uh, who would hire someone uh, b just based on their personal decisions, mm -hmm. they, they are much more biased, they are far more biased than, than okay. any AI system could ever be. So uh, I, I think uh, there we need to somehow balance these these risks against each other and i think this is a this is a hard challenge especially for 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 democratic countries probably a uh, harder challenge than than for others you would always find media or or critics point to the the some cases that that lead to biases whereas uh, on the whole, the, the entire system may, might have much better results than, than any human beings. I think this is a fundamental challenge for which I do not have a good solution for all, for all the cases. Yet, yet, we, <laughs> maybe we are working on it. Um, um, in, in, yeah, Professor Nishika, you also asked about uh, yeah, the transportation laws. So, yes, th this is underway um, for changing laws to allow for um, uh, product liability in the case of autonomous driving and to allow for more of these cars and of, of higher levels. Unfortunately, I, the, the, pro, the process is quite slow and I think it's too slow. Uh, so three years ago, um, Germany uh, was very good at in, in terms of uh, being ready for autonomous vehicles, but it has now Fallen behind a bit uh, behind. So US uh, is is now actually better in terms of the regulatory regulatory framework, and allows for far more um, testing of of these cars and and also introducing them. So, and I agree that it's not enough to comply with constitutional court cases, as you I think mentioned. Uh, but we will we will need to work on, on the details of, of of the laws and not just say well everything is in the constitution and and. We just need to derive something from there. No, it's it's much more complicated than that. Um, for the explainable AI, and maybe this is the last point. I think we need to. Um, well, there are several tools. We need to, uh, for example, use these counterfactual cases that that are often being used. Uh, uh, I mean, it's not very sophisticated, just uh, feeding the system with a lot of different data and, and seeing what, what the results are in, in the kind of sandbox approach. Uh, I think this is, this is the best you can do. Um, but explainable AI is, is, a, is, a, uh, is a very broad field and you will need to design inter interfaces. And for, for people who are using it, uh, it's, it's, there are a lot of questions to be taken into account. Who is the one... Uh, for whom the system needs to be explained, uh, is it is it a specialist? Is it um, is it an administrator or is it an end user? So there are lots of lots of questions here. Um, yeah, I think I've covered most of it. If I've forgotten uh, something major, please let me know. Thank you. Um, yeah, thank you very thank you. much. So yeah, about um, diversity. I uh, was inspired that uh, AI is respecting diversity better than other technologies. So I think um, we usually compare in between um, human and uh, AI, but I think it is sometimes unfair <laughs> for AI. So we should compare AI with other technologies. So I think, yeah, it's very good. Um, perspective, I think, but I think uh, so. Yeah, and about skin color, I think human is much more um, biased than, <laughs> than AI. So I think it's true. I think, yeah. So um, you should go. Thank you very much for uh, your replies. Uh, and and uh, I um, almost don't convince the of your opinions, but uh, maybe not not uh, to disagree, but. How, now I'm all still concerned about how to make uh, unbiased AI systems. So about uh, what, what to say. So just uh, so if uh, there there uh, 
we have a uh, correlation ship uh, between the crime rate uh, of skin color uh, regarding skin color and uh, uh, the skin color itself so so maybe yeah, if we don't store the creating process uh, developing process of, of ai uh, so the if the uh, and if the ai uh, uh, decided to, uh, somewhat uh, uh, somewhat unfavorable decision to uh, with uh, black color people. So maybe mass media or some may, may a lot of people uh, start will start to say that the the, the uh, this AI is unbiased. Uh, sorry, this AI is biased. So, mm -hmm. but if the uh, creation process is stored and so uh, we, and published, uh, it's I think it's okay, but uh, at the same time, maybe th this kind of creation process is sometimes uh, sh uh, should be protected by uh, by copyright law, uh, copyright law, so trade secret law, or something. So, so because uh, the, uh, uh, how can I say so? It, uh, yeah. be because uh, keep, uh, in order to keep uh, the developers incentive to, to uh, yeah. Right. So the, the, this kind of trade off, trade off. Uh, what do you think about this kind of so, to solve so, so these kind of problems? <laughs> so very yeah. yeah, I mean, I, I know if, if I got that correctly, I, I understood that that the question is about. Uh, yeah, you, on the one hand, and, and you have it with, with many AI systems, obviously, uh, on the one hand, you should make a lot of things transparent about, about your system in, in order to, to be assessed from, from an external, by an external um, whoever uh, person. And, and on the other hand, of course, you need to guard certain secrets about, about that system. Uh, private, I mean, it's, it's private property, basically. And uh, this is something that, of course, the, the especially this, uh, the, the Silicon Valley uh, giants are, are facing. And uh, we are, so, you know, we are uh, working, um, for example, with, with Facebook, um, to some extent on, on, um, on uh, projects. Um, and uh, um, I think, um, um that it's it's not it it won't be possible uh for to ask for uh a complete transparency of 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 all uh, uh, algorithms for example and and all all the data i think this is this is not possible that's why i think the the field explainable ai is so important so facebook has recently said that they would make uh, data accessible for uh, within a certain interface uh, for uh, people to to research it to 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 do research independent and research with uh, on it um, I think this is in general this is a way to go of course it, it's there's a lot of detailed questions to be solved but I, th I think that that's that's something we will see more and more so sort of creating certain kinds of interfaces for people to uh, have access to to the system I mean with autonomous driving we have the same problem we there is there must be some kind of external agency like in, in Germany it's, it's called the TÜV which assesses the security of, of and the safety of cars and and they will to some extent also need to have a look at algorithms uh, but to what level of detail this is this is a, a question that it will probably not be to, to down to the last detail of algorithms since this is a property uh, but but some interface needs to be built and um, yeah otherwise it, it won't be possible I agree Thank you very much. Maybe my uh, my question was very related to your uh, uh, divisional thinking about uh, the trust of in uh, trust in external and internal things. Maybe mm -hmm. so. Uh, maybe I I should organize my ideas into uh, into your external and internal trust. Maybe. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Mitsushima. Do you have any comments? <laughs> Ah, so, uh, uh, Professor Kawase and uh, Professor Ryutage, uh, you uh, mentioned uh, both uh, about diversity. And uh, as a political scientist, uh, I'm also interested in uh, the problem diversity. Uh, I study uh, the politics about immigrants. Uh, I have uh, re written uh, articles and books about uh, uh, chauvinism and populism. 
but uh, my question is uh, about the diversity, uh, about the relationship uh, between diversity and AI. Uh, what do you think about the cultural difference between different groups uh, in the society uh, and their relation to AI system? Uh, I mean groups uh, such as ethnic groups, gender, uh, or uh, elderly people, younger people, and so on. Uh, every uh, groups can be uh, such groups. Uh, some people, uh, such as younger people, uh, like to take uh, risks uh, and they like to uh, ride uh, faster. Uh, so they, they probably, they like uh, autonomous vehicles that run faster than usual, uh, for example. And other people, older people, elderly people, they don't like to take risks. So probably they prefer to ride on uh, autonomous vehicles that run slower than usual. Uh, uh, and uh, probably, uh, according to my experience, men like to uh, go faster. Uh, so uh, there are many uh, different kinds of people in the society, and they have uh, a kind of cultural difference. And in that situation, uh, in that society with multiple people, multiple segments of people, what kind of AI is desirable? AI should adapt to the cultural pattern of the majority of the society, or uh, do you think there should be variety of AIs? So variety of autonomous vehicles. Uh, some autonomous vehicles run faster, others, around slower uh, and elderly people can choose the slower vehicles uh, and younger people can choose uh, faster vehicles oh uh, is uh, do you think uh, is that that situation is desirable they can you, you, it means we can choose or we can customize the ai uh, according to their own uh, taste. So, so um, that's my question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. So, um, yeah, let me give you a, a brief answer. Uh, of course, we will see customization of, of AI and in this case of uh, autonomous vehicles. Um, of, but within certain ranges, probably. Um, uh, so it, it's clear that uh, you can, you will be able to, to set the car to, uh, for example, go on the autobahn to go rather like 120 kilometers. When I did some test driving with, with a, a um, highly automated car, we, it, it, could, it could go up to 120 kilometers per hour by itself. Uh, um, so there's a certain upper limit to that. Um, but there is a range. I mean, it, it it can't go too too slow on the on the autobahn either. Um, and um, um, I mean, there is a, a professor from Italy, I think, uh, who who this, but it was a thought experiment who introduced this idea of having an ethics uh, um, um, uh, button that that you push in certain directions and you either push, set it like this or like that. Um, but for the for the cases of unavoidable crashes, uh, so I, here I don't think we we can we can have the these these customizations. I think for for these uh, high higher risk areas, we will probably need to have some some agreed um, setting that that all people would use. Otherwise, it's just the. Um, the, uh, you need to have this information that you, you trust in the other vehicle to have in, at least for the risk, for the high risk areas, the same setting. Otherwise, it, it won't probably be possible. But the customization and or the ad adapting uh, to cultures, I mean, this is certainly an aspect. Um, there is this famous moral machine uh, uh, experiment and they have been collecting data about what would people prefer in case of unavoidable crashes and there is there are aspects there are aspects of, of culture in it um, so it's, I think it was in, in, in China I think there was a preference for rather killing the younger person uh, whereas in most other societies it was a preference for killing the, the um, 
the older person, mm -hmm. uh, if I remember correctly. But uh, we also need to take into account that there are constitutional rights, and and uh, so if this is this would certainly be against the constitution, not just in, in democratic societies, but in, actually in others as as well. Um, so yeah, so the, I think that's maybe uh, my answer. We, we will certainly need to see customization, but but not but only within certain ranges. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so uh, within certain ranges, uh, customization could be. <laughs> sure. Uh, oh. I mean, everyone has a certain style of driving, for example, mm -hmm. we have now, and and uh, and. Um, um, for example, when it comes to, would you overtake a car? Uh, would you always overtake a car when it's possible? And many people would always overtake as, as, as soon as it's possible, but, but others would rather stay a long time behind another car. And, and that is something that will probably be open to customization. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much. And any other? Okay, so, yeah. so regarding that point, so I have one question. Uh, it, it's very difficult for for me to uh, so under uh, sorry for me to um, know know uh, the degree uh, the burden degree the uh, so the, the maximum degree of customization. So maybe speed control should not be customized uh, by uh, by using the no. Uh, no, yes. Can you think? <laughs> the, the, the question was, was the speed, speed control, yeah? Yeah, speed. So no, yeah. not about uh, if I have an air conditioner. I mean, this is very relevant in Germany since, as you know, we have still no, no general speed limit on the Autobahn. No? Uh, and and um, um, it, it is probably a question whether, uh, I mean, on, an autonomous car would certainly not uh, go like, 200 kilometers per hour on its own, on, on, on autonomous mode. That's, that's not uh, possible. Or it, it would be possible, but it's not probably not acceptable. Um, but um, as I said, in, the, in the, these cars that I was test driving, it, it went up to 120. Um, I mean, Autobahn is a very highly regulated and, and, and standardized environment. So in that environment, it is, you have, um, not actually not so much uh, uh, liberties, let's say. Of, of, oh, uh, I see, I see. So, uh, so, so you mean so it is already regulated by and uh, strongly regulated. So, it, 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 uh, what we can customize is enough enough restricted. I see. I, I understand. But maybe maybe in uh, Asian people thinking, I think uh, is. Some kind of uh, international standards, uh, and so the fact that the international standard is set uh, can <laughs> relieve us. But maybe you, as you said, so the constitutional law, uh, from the perspective of constitutional law, maybe the Western people uh, tend to, uh, uh, tend to, uh, sorry, they insist on their own freedom. <laughs> so maybe so, maybe uh, we have culture gap. Okay, yeah, that's that, that's that's might be possible, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah, okay. yeah, it's very it was very clear from the other side that for example mm -hmm. Alpha, we don't have any Alpha. Um yeah. actually I, I'm not sure about the German outbound, but is it very different from Japanese highway? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so maybe uh, if, uh, sorry, so not unrestricted in Part three, I think. Yeah, yes. It is, I mean, on, um, on most parts of the Autobahn, there is no general speed limit. Oh. Uh, <laughs> like, it was, I, I'd be like 60, 60, or I've seen some figures, maybe 60% of the Autobahn uh, is, or maybe more, 60%. On the others, there is, so for example, around Mun Munich, I mean, uh, there is this, yeah, the, the Autobahn around Munich, in most uh, areas, you can only drive 120, maybe. Uh, but if you go a little further away, not not much actually, then you are <laughs> on on a uh, part where where you can yes drive as fast as possible. Yeah. So I think that is quite different. Yeah. Yeah, I think it is um, 
um, because uh, run, uh, the difference of landscape uh, in between uh, Japan and Germany. So I think uh, in Japan, we have so many mountains and valleys and uh, our highway is yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not very um, comfortable <laughs> as German, I think. So, yeah, yeah, but it's, it, I mean, we also have a number of mountains uh, in, in Germany. So. <laughs> <laughs> but but I, I think, um, Professor, you know yeah. very well about the um, very narrow street in Kyoto City, I think. <laughs> so I, I, I think it's very um, difficult. So, yeah, nearly impossible or uh, very, at least it's very difficult to um, and have the, the safer uh, autonomous car in a uh, big city like Kyoto, I think, and in the near future. Yeah, I mean, uh, what what the uh, engineers say is, is that it, it, it is actually quite easy to implement autonomous cars on the autobahn, uh, mm -hmm. because they say it's very standardized, it's very, uh, yeah, it, it's it's there is there yeah, is no no traffic coming from the from the other direction, and so it's it's it, it's quite easy actually. In in cities, it is it is much more complicated. Uh, however, um, I mean the, the the speed is also very sl very much uh, slower. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. So it's there. It's they say it's not the the most uh, difficult question. The difficult question would rather be in on roads. Uh, um, so, um, how do you say, uh, roads between uh, cities, but, but not autobahn. So mm -hmm. those uh, Landstraße in German, um, th those, because there you have relatively high speed uh, at 100 kilometers per hour, for example, but it's not standardized and, and uh, there are a lot of things can happen and that might be even more dangerous. So I think that's, mm -hmm. that's what they say, I think it was is the most difficult case. Mm -hmm. And I think the, the I I think the German uh, outbound is international, so the go beyond the national border line. So yes. yeah, I think it has a lot of problems when we um, go across the national border line. So you, you, yes, um, yeah, yeah, and you made some um, the EU um, ethical rule. I think so. It is international one, but I think. Yeah, th this is the um, issue of the uh, legal philosophy, but uh, we have the diversity of ethics and diversity of uh, role. So actually, mm -hmm. it is another very difficult issue, I think. Yeah, yeah that is just maybe just um, uh, to comment briefly on that. Um, um, it's, it's surprising to, to see that in, in many countries, actually, uh, you almost never cross a border with a come with a car, <laughs> of mm -hmm. course. <laughs> but but also in in many other countries, yeah, I mean, to China in China, you maybe you go to Hong Kong, but 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 <laughs> if, uh. <laughs> if that's another country. Uh, but also in I mean in US, it's rarely the case. Yeah, you might go to Mexico, but and, and cross to Canada, but it's it's basically uh. the same. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but, in, within Europe, it's it's totally different. So you you cross company, you cross borders all the time. And if you if you want to introduce autonomous driving, and and have a, a certain the, the right regulatory framework for that, then you will need to have an, a European solution. Uh, otherwise, you will have a lot of chaos there. And, and uh, this is this is what what is currently also uh, hindering. I think still hindering the regulation. Hopefully, now it's actually the final days of the German presidency of the EU. Uh, until December, uh, there we will ho hopefully see some kind of uh, EU, EU joint uh, um, mutual uh, joint regulation for for these AVs. Mm. Yeah. yeah, actually, in that point, I think Japan has a very big um, advantage that we, we are the island country. <laughs> but I, I have some um, tradition have plan to um, connect um, Japan and Korean Peninsula <laughs> with mm -hmm. undersea tunnels. So if uh, we have such a um, <laughs> kind of thing, we have the same problem as you. But yeah, yeah, it, it probably um, impossible in near future. <laughs> so yeah, but, but I think we should think about that. So yeah, so. Yeah, thank you. So, any other comment or question? No, no. All right. So, um, yeah, we already took time more than I think ninety minutes. So, um, shall we finish? Okay. Yeah. So, thank you very much. So, yeah, yeah. So, um, I. <clears throat>
and I'd like to make some uh, final remarks. Uh, so thank you very much, Professor Yutoge. I enjoyed very much for uh, the discussion. And actually three years ago, um, Chiba University invited Professor Ryutoke and Dr. Macias Ur from Technical University of Munich. And in the following year, I was invited to a conference in uh, TUM that uh, business ethics and digitization. And now I am very pleased um, with our continuing discussion. So I hope we can uh, be going on this way and deepen the relationship between uh, Technical University of Munich and Chiba University. And actually, I really want to visit Munich again in the near future. So please uh, keep in touch with us. So um, uh, thank you very much. So uh, let me close the conference. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much you. for the invitation. Hope to see you soon and see in you, person again. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.